knowing God. To understand and apply godly wisdom, we must enter into a personal relationship with the Father through His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Here now is Dr. Gene Getz. As you look at this chapter, you're going to see that Solomon used personal pronouns to personify wisdom. Now, it's easy, I think, to miss this point. And you, you'll see that immediately as we, we begin to read. Proverbs 8, 22, 23. The Lord made me at the beginning of His creation. Before His works of long ago, I was formed before ancient times, from the beginning, before the earth began. Superficially, if you look at that, you might say, well, he's talking about Jesus. But he can't be talking about Jesus. Because look at what we read in John 1. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. You see, the verses that we read earlier simply says that I was formed before ancient times from the beginning before the earth began. What he's talking about here had a beginning. Jesus did not have a beginning. In the beginning he was. So immediately if you make that contrast, he's talking about something else other than Jesus. Well, as you read on, it becomes even clearer, I think. Proverbs 8, 27. I was there when He established the heavens, when He laid out the horizon on the surface of the ocean, when He placed the skies above, when the fountains of the ocean gushed out. Now, I believe He is talking about Jesus, but the personification says, I was there when Jesus did these things when He established the heavens, when He laid out the horizon on the surface of the ocean, when He placed the skies above, when the fountains of the ocean gushed out. And that correlates, you see, with the next verse in John chapter 1. All things were created through Him, that is, through the Word who was Jesus. All things were created through Him, and apart from Him, not one thing was created that has been created. Here in Proverbs, we see that all spelled out in more detail in terms of what was created, these actual uh, aspects of nature. But what it's talking about is that wisdom came into existence at this time and was associated with God and with Jesus Christ. So the personification here is godly wisdom. Look at uh, verses 30-31. I was a skilled craftsman beside Him. Now that shows how wisdom is associated with Jesus. Jesus Christ and wisdom are very closely associated. And he's personifying wisdom as being right beside Jesus or being a part of the whole creative process. I was a skilled craftsman beside him, that is Jesus. I was his delight every day, always rejoicing before him. I was rejoicing in his inhabited world, delighting in the human race. In personifying wisdom, Solomon is saying, that I was a part of what God said when He created the earth and said, it was good. It was good. And then He created man and said, it is what? Very good. Now notice the correlation. I was rejoicing in His inhabited world, delighting in the human race. And obviously, that was before sin entered the world. Looking down on what God actually created. Wisdom was a part of the process of enjoyment as far as God and Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit are concerned. But then sin entered in the world. And John continues to unfold the story. In verse 14, the Word became flesh. The Word that was in the beginning with God, who was operating with wisdom, 
that is being personified here. The Word became flesh, took up residence among us. We observed His glory. The glory is the one only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. So you see, it appears that uh, in the New Testament, and particularly in Paul's writings, uh, for example, he, in, in Colossians, he, allu- he alluded, I think here, uh, to this personification of wisdom that is related to who God is. To who God is and who Jesus Christ is and who the Holy Spirit is. And here's what he said in Colossians 1. It sounds like what we read in John, but it also sounds like what we read in Proverbs. He, Jesus, is the image of the invisible God. He's not talking about wisdom. He's talking about Jesus and God. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For everything was created by Him in heaven and on earth, the visible and the invisible. Whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, All things have been created through Him and for Him. He is before all things. And by Him, all things hold together. That's Jesus. That's the one that John was writing about in his gospel. But notice, when you go on in Colossians into chapter 2, here is Paul's prayer. I want their hearts, that is, all of these new believers in this Roman world. I want their hearts to be encouraged and joined together in love so that they may have all the riches of assured understanding and have the knowledge of God's mystery, Christ. All the treasures of what? Wisdom and knowledge are hidden in Him. And I believe that's what Solomon was talking about when he personified wisdom as being right there with Jesus Christ when it all began. Jesus, who was already in the beginning. And so, think about Proverbs 9.10 in relationship to what we've just thought about. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. So, Think about this great truth and think about this principle as you reflect on how that relates to our lives today. Here's a reflection response question. How do Paul's prayers for New Testament believers in Colossians 1, 9 to 14 relate to these great wisdom passages in Proverbs? Well, look at Colossians 1, 9 and 10. For this reason also, Since the day we heard this, that is, heard of your conversion to Jesus Christ, we haven't stopped praying for you. And understand the context there. See, Paul did not go to Colossae. But Philemon, who lived in Colossae, probably came and heard Paul in Ephesus, went back, he came to Christ, went back, led his whole family to Christ, and that began the church in Colossae. So Paul is saying, ever since I've heard about your faith. We haven't stopped praying for you. We're asking that you may be filled with the knowledge of His will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. You see the correlation with what we read back there in Proverbs? Jesus Christ is the embodiment of wisdom so that you may walk worthy of the Lord. This is the result of his prayer. He's praying that we might have this godly wisdom that is in Christ, so that we can walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to Him, bearing fruit in every good work, and growing in the knowledge of God. So here's the principle. To understand and apply godly wisdom We must enter into a personal relationship with the Father through His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. 